So at this time, I am thrilled to introduce our first presenter. Our first presenter, who I'm going to have some time chatting with, is Rusty Hicks. He was elected to serve as chair of the California Democratic Party on June 1st, 2019. Rusty believes the party's top priority should be grassroots organizing to create people-powered election victories. As a labor union activist, Rusty has a proven record of organizing grassroots power in order to win tough races. As DSCC delegate for over 12 years, Rusty has seen the powerful impact of party voter registration, persuasion, and turnout efforts. As president of the LA County Federation of Labor, of Labor Rusty Hicks stood up to powerful corporations to make progress for working families and organize to create real change. Rusty's initiatives at the LA Fed are many, and he is ambitious in working there. Rusty took a leave from the LA Fed to join the Obama 2008 campaign, where he served as the California political director. Early in his career, Rusty learned, Rusty learned the power of local action while working for the late assembly member Mike Gordon and then assembly member Ted Lieu. Rusty, raised by a single mother, understands the challenges of working families firsthand. His mother was a bookkeeper, his grandfather a grocery clerk, and his grandmother a teacher's aide. Their hard work inspired Rusty to a life of service. Rusty is a lieutenant in the US Navy Reserve and a graduate of Austin College and Loyola Law School. He lives in Pasadena with his wife, Sandra, and their dog, Charlie. Rusty, it is nice to see you. Welcome to the 14th Annual Developments Disabilities Public Policy Conference. Jordan, it's, uh, it's great to be with you, although uh, I, uh, I feel like you worked this in such a way where you get to wear a Tommy Bahama shirt and your favorite sports gear. And so really <laughs> right? well yeah. done. Well That's done. pretty much how it works. You know what? I feel like I should. I'm, I mean, I'm interviewing the, the chair of the California Democratic Party. No. <laughs> Jeez, I should be a little presentable. Here. OK, now I feel better. No. All right, here we go. So we're, uh, we're really grateful that you came to spend some time with us today. Um, again, to our attendees. We uh, encourage you to use the Q&A feature for questions at the end. And um, we're going to have a little bit of time just digging into you and learning about party politics. Um, and Rusty, I just invite you to start off and kick off and tell us about yourself and how you got involved with the Democratic Party. Well, uh, thanks, Jordan. And let me just say thanks to uh, the ARC for the opportunity uh, to, to be with you today. Um, I uh, always look forward to opportunities to talk about uh, the work of our party, uh, especially in connection with uh, such important communities like the disabilities community. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, in, in many ways, I, I have been in this role as the chair of the California Democratic Party for the last uh, 18 months or so. So some days it feels like it's been 18 years, but it's only been 18 months. Uh, I came to this work uh, through the labor movement. I was the political director and the president of the LA County uh, Federation of Labor, uh, representing uh, 300 local unions and 800,000 hardworking women and men in the, in the county of Los Angeles who had the benefit of a union that had a collective voice uh, on the job. And in many ways, I, you know, we talk about the twists and turns of our lives and where we end up, where we end up. And in some ways it's ironic that I ended up as the chair of the largest state party in the country and one of the largest labor movements in the country because I was born and raised in Texas. Don't hold that against me. I got here as fast as I could. Um, but no one in my family uh, ever carried a union card. You know, in the introduction, you talked about uh, my, my own family, my mother, my grandparents, and all their hard work. Uh, they did not have the opportunity to have the benefit of a union. They did not have a collective voice uh, on the job. And at the same time, no one in my family ever was or is a Democrat. So you can understand that my Thanksgiving dinners are, have been quite unique for a long, long time. Uh, but I share that with you because I think it has given me um, you know, a full appreciation for um, all 40 million Californians, all of whom aren't registered uh, as uh, Democrats, all of whom don't 
have the benefit of a union, but it's given me a real appreciation for our work is about improving the lives of all Californians. Uh, Cause I've seen how the other half lives uh, and understand what that is really about. And so really those, that's how I came to this work. Uh, once I uh, left Texas, I ended up doing political work for uh, a number of members and then uh, worked in the labor movement as a political organizer and then president and then ran for this seat some 18 months ago and, and was elected. And uh, so, so that's how I end up where I end up. That's wonderful. Thanks for uh, sharing that backstory. It's great to just kind of get to know and, you know, we won't hold Texas against you, we promise. <laughs> um, we're gracious here. Um, and tell us a little bit about the party. Give us a party, Democratic Party 101. Why and does it, how does it function? Tell us about how it impacts people's lives and why Californians should care about knowing about the Democratic Party and how the party process works. Well, I would say the, the California Democratic Party is a you know, a storied institution that's been around for uh, a long, long time, more than more than a century. Um, and historically, I think our party has been primarily focused on electing Democrats uh, who then, you know, co are connected to a party platform and then seek to implement um, that platform through legislation through policies, obviously we're in California, so we have uh, ballot measures, uh, which obviously can, can directly impact people's lives in a, in a big, big way. But the party is, is really about um, putting forward a, a, a vision, a set of values for what California and what our country can be and should be. And then it's about recruiting and training, endorsing and supporting candidates um, and causes for public office or for passage. Um, and then uh, seeing uh, that platform brought to life through um, those ballot measures or through those, those candidates who then become elected or appointed uh, officials. I have often argued that that is really two thirds of our work, that our work is really about continuing to organize after, uh, after election day because the real power of the party is in 10 million Democrats across the state who, if truly uh, engaged, can improve the lives of 40 million uh, Californians. The governance of our party is really broken down in three primary categories, those that are elected at the county level, those that are elected at the you know, community and grassroots level, and those that are appointed by elected officials or, or statewide officers. Our governing body is about 3,500 uh, delegates uh, of the party, which are reorganized every, every two years with an executive board of about 10% of the, of the body. Uh, and there are five statewide officers and 20 regional directors uh, that uh, support the work of the party uh, in addition to the last thing I'll add is, is we have nine standing committees, which about 10% of the body are part of those standing committees that are volunteer um, entities that help to carry out the work uh, of the party. And so it is a, you know, the largest state party in the country with, you know, a responsibility to answer to 10 million Democrats across the state uh, is, is pretty multi-layered and pretty complex, but at its core, uh, it's about bringing a platform to life through electoral politics, but ultimately through real grassroots organizing. So then t talk to us about disability in the California Democratic Party and, and where does disability have a role in regards to either platforms or uh, committees or positions? Um, tell us about the uh, progress that the California Democratic Party has made towards a disability community? You know, in, in, it's a great question. And in, in preparation for <clears throat> today, I actually went back and read uh, the disabilities plank uh, in our party platform. And 
if you uh, will indulge me, I'd just read you the uh, a, a couple lines of the preamble that I think really yeah. kind of summarize the, the rest of the, the plank. Uh, it, it reads, quote, California Democrats believe in the full equality of people with disabilities and oppose ableism in all its forms. People with disabilities have an inalienable right to participate as equals in all aspects of civic and political life. We support the empowerment of people with disabilities to control their own lives and recognize the strength of diversity and true equality for people with disabilities. And so it, the, the party platform then goes on to talk about our support for um, breaking down of barriers uh, that prevent uh, the disabilities community from living full lives, uh, support for laws that are on the books and enforcement uh, of those laws that are on the books, supports for programs uh, that are um, obviously a part at the state, federal, and, and local levels, and then spells out a lot of specificity as to what that, what that really means. And so I think there's been some significant work within our platform of what we um, are you know, speaking to as to what our, our party stands for with regards to the disabilities community. The other is we have a disabilities caucus led by our, uh, both a regional director and a caucus chair, Henny Kelly, uh, who is uh, obviously a leader in the uh, disability rights community. And uh, so the caucus's role has really been, you know, the beautiful words that you heard and the detail within the platform has really come about because of the caucus's uh, work. And it's also, also sought to ingrain uh, references to an acknowledgement of the disabilities community within other planks uh, of the platform. Um, you know, the other is um, people with disabilities, delegates with a disability are a part of all of the caucuses uh, of, our, of our party. We have uh, right at 20 caucuses of our party. And actually, in my appointments that I uh, put in place um, some 18 months ago, we sought to both expand the number of seats that were a part of those standing committees and 16% um, uh, uh, of those seats are held by delegates uh, with, a, with a disability. Um, and so on every committee, uh, in every caucus, uh, there are, um, uh, delegates with a disability that are bringing that voice to every part of our of our party, and I think it's why you see such a strong um, a platform plank uh, a plank within our platform. Um, in addition to a lot of that activity being coordinated by the um, um, you know the, the disabilities caucus, uh, and I, I've been I've been proud. To even I get a, a number of appointments myself and. Jonathan Lyons, who is um, who is uh, um, blind, is one of my six appointees as a as a delegate. And so, you know, I feel like um, delegates with disability play a really important role within the life of the uh, of the party. So, did you say sixteen percent of the delegates of the California Democratic Party have no disability? No, sixteen percent of the standing committee appointments. Okay. So there's roughly 300 or so standing committee appointments to those nine committees where the volunteer work of the party really takes place. 16% of those delegates um, uh, in, in those seats, those members are delegates with a disability. And, and there's a disability caucus you were talking about as well that developed that really powerful uh, position statement that uh, your party has, that's great. Um, and I want to welcome at this point as well um, a, an advocate with who is just um, continues to blow me away at the ways that she changes the world around her and the, and the greater world and our state. So Elizabeth Grigsby is here to join us as well. And Elizabeth is the uh, she works at Golden Gate Regional Center and she also works with us, the Arc of California, on some of our projects. And she's going to join us as well, just to continue to, the conversation about um, disability and party politics, and specifically the uh, California Democratic Party. Liz, you want to say hi? 
Hi, good morning. I'm so, I'm so excited to be here and me actually get to talk to official Democratic, uh, somebody from the Democratic Party. Um, as you know, um, this whole year has been a whirlwind with 20, 20, 20, and 21 for our community, actually for the whole country. And um, somebody who has a physical disability, cerebral palsy, I'm, I'm very active in the disability community at large. And um, I just, I feel like there needs to be more representation of people with disabilities at the forefront and the table of when we, I would love to talk to candidates from the Democrat Party um, for a lot of time, I think the disability community has been not seen as a real society, and we've been looked at as, oh, all they need to be is taken care of, and like that, oh, they cost too much money. But I'm here to say I'm a force to be reckoned with. I'm I'm a woman with a physical di disability. There's nothing wrong with my brain. I'm edu I'm an educated woman of color. I believe that all people need to be treated equally. And last year, as, as we know, the administration was, I, I really felt like, <laughs> I'm gonna just be a little bit candid. I felt like we were going backwards. And I really feel, I wanna know from you as somebody from a Democratic Party, what are your hopes and what is the Democratic Party going to do for people with disabilities? Well, uh, Liz, it's nice to, uh, nice to meet you. And uh, I, I think you were said you were a, quote, force to be reckoned with. And yeah. uh, your your name precedes you, just so you know. So it, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, no, no, no doubt. I, I would say that uh, I think our, as I mentioned before, I think our party has um, a, a very uh, clear uh, vision uh, within our platform as to what our our hope 
um, is for and what we strive for in the equality for the disabilities community. Now, the important part is, all right, a platform's good. Well, where's the action connected to that? Um, and I do think that I would just remark that it was a Democrat who drafted and helped pass the ADA, which we just celebrated the 25th, I believe it was the 25th anniversary of um, just, just recently. Um, we have to continue to improve upon that uh, in both enforcement of the laws that are on the books. We have to ensure that there is um, uh, adequate funding for the programs that are on the books or the improvements of those programs. Um, and we also have to be proactively uh, working to break down the barriers within our own organizations, um, but within our society that prevent members of the disabilities community from living out full and equal lives, fully accessing that. Um, you know, what's interesting in our, in our platform it actually calls for an expectation that every elected official have at least one person on staff that has a um, uh, is well versed in disability civil rights related issues and calls upon elected officials to be connected to those organizations that are subject matter experts in the in the space. Um, you know, not everybody knows everything about everything. And so in many ways, I think we need to be taking your lead. We need to be taking the ARC's lead about how best to break down the barriers that um, are still in our, uh, in our society. So I believe that's been a commitment of our party uh, certainly one that's continued while I've been uh, chair and I believe continues on in the future, not solely because of the leadership, not because of the platform, but because the engagement of um, uh, delegates and Democrats that are living with a disability being connected to our, our party in a, in a very real and meaningful way. I would love to help you break down those barriers. Um, like Jordan said earlier, I work for one of our regional centers, Golden Gate Regional Center. I'm the rights advocate. I've been working there for over 20 something years. But I also, I, I'm an advocate outside of the regional center. Like Jordan said, I'm a consultant for the Arctic California. I've, done, I've taken partner and policy classes with Jordan since 2007. We go way back, don't we, Liz? Yeah. I went up to <laughs> Sacramento every weekend to learn about what it meant to be an effective policymaker on the disability level. I, um, when I give talks, the first thing I tell people, no one's invincible. No one on this earth is invincible. We can all get a disability at any given time. So when we think about money and think about 
accessibility is not just for the DD community, it's for everyone who's gonna eventually become disabled. If you live long enough, you're gonna be elderly. So you might as well start thinking about your future in the in that way. And I just as a as a person with a disability, I wanna keep that in the Democratic Party that. I I believe that you guys are a people's party, and I really wanna I really wanna emphasize that. Don't don't forget about people with disabilities, because some of us are really strong and some of us we all have a voice and people need to listen to what we have to say because we can make and shape this country just like anyone else people say black, black lives matter well, disabled lives matter just as well. Absolutely. Well said, Liz. Absolutely. And that leads me into a couple of my last questions for you, Rusty, and then we'll go to the Q&A from our attendees. Um, has the California Democratic Party ever endorsed a candidate with a disability? And if the answer is yes, then why? And if the answer is only one or two, then, um, or no, then why not more? That's a, uh, a great question. And I would, you know, uh, really point to the leader of our party, our chief executive, uh, the governor of California, who has talked about his own um, uh, life that he has lived with dys dyslexia. Uh, and he has found a way to, um, not only live with dyslexia, but found a way to, I mean, his, his um, uh, nimbleness with the details of a complicated state like California, I think is in large part because of his uh, disability. It has in fact made him stronger in, in many ways. It's also made for really long press conferences as well. Um, but <laughs> I think that's a good thing. He has a grasp of what's going on within our state. Lorena Gonzalez, who is a warrior for uh, working people. I called her, you know, uh, a brawler and I meant it in the best possible, you know, complimentary sort of way. Uh, also, you know, lives with the same disability. Uh, Latifa Simon, who is president of the, of the BART board. Is, is legally blind um, and a member of the, uh, a delegate to the state party uh, and is also uh, a member of the Disabilities Caucus. Um, and I know there are, there, there are more, I mean, our, our president, you know, has historically, um, has talked about his own uh, experience with a, um, um, a speech um, a disability that he, I think um, um, has lived with and found a way to, you know, um, empathize with people in a way in which clearly our last president didn't uh, and many presidents have, have not. And so, um, you know, I think there, my, my hope is there, there would be more, especially those with um, uh, more, uh, with, with with physical disabilities, um, because I think it's you know critical um, 
in our, uh, you know, a, a place as diverse as California, uh, I'm certain there are more. I, I don't have a comprehensive list, and maybe it's something that we should begin to begin to compile. Uh, but my hope there will be more in the future. Absolutely. I, I would love to meet you one day uh, in person. I would love to keep in contact with you because together, I think we can make no no Absolutely. doubt no doubt yeah. i'll follow your lead yeah i think <laughs> we're all looking forward to meeting in person again i'm looking forward to seeing you too liz in person um last of my questions i'm going to jump over to the q a attendees if you have questions for rusty please put them in there um oh and to ask a q a just ask a question ask click the q a button on the bottom if you haven't done so before um so we've seen and this kind of ties in what you were just talking about. We, we have seen groups that have historically faced inequities um, rise in your party. Uh, one example is Latinos. Um, what do you think contributed to their success? And how can the disability community copy that and emulate that? And what is your advice to the disability community to become a real power broker within party politics? Well, I, you know, with respect to the Latino community, in some ways, the Republicans have um, uh, really put their foot on the gas with the mass exodus of uh, Latinos from the, you know, the, from the Republican Party. Pete Wilson in 1994 and Prop 187 kind of made clear as to what the lines were, and our party has uh, been um, uh, vocal. Um, on on issues of immigrant rights and communities of color, um, but I do think the the if there's a formula, and I don't think there necessarily is, but if there is, I think one is to you know for any community to embrace its own power uh, and to not cede that power solely to elected officials or those that have um, you know um, designated authority. Right, we as a uh, as humans and as people and as communities hold our own power, and so one is to embrace that power. And I think Liz, you you spoke about, um, you know, as I say it again, you said you're forced to be reckoned with. When you're not the only one, there are um, there's a large community, and you should embrace the power of of that community. Um, I think too, it's intent to engage. You know engage in politics, whether it's within the formal structure of the party, whether it's in a democratic club, whether it's in a, you know, a county committee, whether it's becoming a delegate at the state level, um, uh, to, or, or whether it's even in your own community, uh, on a ballot measure or supporting a campaign or a candidate or running for office yourself or getting appointed. Uh, but find a way, as John Lewis would say, find a way to get in the way to get in good necessary trouble. Um, and so I think that, and the last thing I think is to, is to, is to organize, you know? If you're gonna truly embrace your power, if you're gonna engage in political discourse, you gotta continue to organize, not just in the election season, not just around a piece of public policy, but always be looking to grow that power and that engagement. I think if you do that, uh, there's there's no no telling what uh, what you might be able to do.